Riley, who was fired by the Chargers. The question then was, would Norv Turner stay on as the offensive coordinator? According to Chris Mortensen, Norv Turner opting out of his contract. He had an option in his contract to come out if a new head coach came in. So Turner is out, but the other Redskin coach is in. More on this, the full treatment on SportsCenter. SportsCenter on the road at the Super Bowl. Steve Levy and Rich Eisen. Super Bowl teams have arrived already. The latest on Steve Eiserman and much more. That's right after Missouri and Kansas. Kareem Rush is ready, and so are we. Missouri and Kansas, Big 12 basketball coming up next here on ESPN. Enjoy. Just the house that Fog Allen built, a native of Missouri, but a longtime coach of the Jayhawks. Tonight, their fans in full throat, a sellout crowd to watch the number two team in the country. on hand and Lawrence Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse it's a number two team in the land at 17 and 2 against the number 24 Missouri Tigers as Big Monday presented by Bud Light continues and the border war has great significance as it does every year Kansas the only team with an unblemished record at 6 and 0 Missouri can move closer to the top should they be able to pull an upset tonight on the road hi again everybody I'm Brad Nestler with Dick Vitale and this is the place to be in college hoops tonight Missouri struggled a little bit they got back on track over the weekend, and since the loss to UCLA, Kansas back on a four-game roll. Well, you look at his Kansas basketball team. It's one of my favorite teams. They have Ray Balance, Gooden, and Collison. The best one-two punch on a baseline. Kirk Heinrich, so underrated. Six consecutive years, they've been unblemished in the Big 12. And then he got their first loss. It was to Missouri. But the games were with the Antlers, and they were in Columbia. <laughs> Today, it's Rock Chalk, Jayhawk, and the Fog Fanatics are ready to rock and roll. Here's the lineups for Quinn Snyder and Roy Williams, Gilbert. Robert Rush, Pauling, Bryan, and Johnson for Missouri for Kansas. Miles, Boshi, Heinrich in a three-guard offense with the aforementioned Gooden and Collison. Oh, boy. It's already warm in here. You can feel it, Mr. Nestle. You can feel it. It's the 244th meeting of these longtime rivals. The border war, Mr. Nestle. Heinrich's going to guard Rush. Heinrich's so underrated defensively. John Plocker, he's got it in hand. These teams have split, as Dick said, over the last six years. Last year, each team winning at home. Roy Williams, four, right now, two and two with Mr. Snyder. We're underway. And Missouri into the front court. Clarence Gilbert, who five games ago switched to that point guard spot. That's the one real Achilles heel for them. Consistent play out on the perimeter at the point guard slot. Bryant had it tipped away momentarily by Gooden. Kansas good, tough, man-to-man -man defense, Brad. They have to bring it back out on top and reset with 10 on the shot clock. Miles all over Gilbert. Miles, good athlete, former football star as well as basketball. Rush is going to have to rush one from the baseline. At least he got the iron, but Kansas clears it, and here comes Miles on the run. All the way and swatted out of there. Beautiful block by Paulding. Ricky Paul being an outstanding athlete. He's from out of the Motor City in Detroit. Very talented Missouri team. They started the year nine and zip. They worked their way up to the number three spot in the coaches. ESPN USA Today poll. Overrated at that time. You told me that when it was happening, and you were right. Here's Pauling on the backside. So after he gets the block, he gets the rebound and the stick back. He's an inside-outside player, really talented player. Good. In close. Got it. Big timer. Double doubles consistently. The best power forward in America making a run for National Player of the Year honors. So much talked about with Kareem Rush as probably being the preseason Big 12 Player of the Year, but it's Gooden who is the guy right now that's in the driver's seat in that capacity. Long three, and it goes for Gilbert. I tell you, Gilbert can shoot the three. That's 276 now in his career. Boshi has 278. The record, 279. Probably see it fall tonight. Randy Rutherford played at Oklahoma State. Inside. Nice, strong move, and that's what they've got as Dick set Collison inside to go a good Inside, outside, he shoots 60%. A great tandem. Very tough to match up. Well, you can feel the intensity here. Two minutes in, and it's 5-4 Missouri. Low block. Here's Johnson with a hook. Rebound comes off to Boshi on the run. Johnson's had some monster games this year. Heinrich pull-up jumper. He is big time. I love Kirk Heinrich. He can shoot the jumper. He was a record holder last year shooting the three, and he defends, and he's Mr. Clutch, and they love him in Jayhawk land. 
Kansas first lead comes two and a half minutes into the ball game. Missouri very talented team and a lot of young people out there with Paul and Johnson. There's a kick out to three. This one rims out. Kept alive though inside and Johnson's become really a force or soon to be Dick. I think the way he plays in this. Yeah 23 and 15 against Kansas State on the road. Here's Miles with a runner the kick out. Heinrich will try a three. In. He can shoot it. I'll tell you one thing. I didn't see him miss one in practice. He was focused baby. He was focused. Second bucket of the night for Heinrich and it's Kansas by a deuce. I'll tell you this Kansas team really defends. Marty Blake told me before the game from the NBA scouts that Whoa. he thinks it's the most talented team in the country. Gooden rejected. Heinrich the oh, give look. to Gooden inside. Got it. That's just something special. He better get a T.O. baby. He better get a timeout. Quick Snyder better get a timeout. They are rocking here. Oh they are ready. Jayhawk land. Kansas was down three five to two and then they went on a tear. They lead by four. Look at this rejection by Gooden. Look at Gooden coming from the weak side. There's the rejection Brad and then they know how to convert. They do a great job in transition as a look at Gooden. He's the trailer in their transition game. Heinrich could have shot that ball but he gave it up. Michelle Tafoy is the third part of our group tonight. Michelle Dick mentioned Marty Blake. He's not the only NBA scout here. No, that's right. A big interested party. About 20 NBA scouts, Brad, and I'm told that's a new Allen Fieldhouse record, and they even had to set up extra tables for these guys. I talked to a number of them before the game. They gave me three main reasons why they're here. They said the abundance of talent on the floor tonight, a lot of these quality players for the upcoming draft, and they said they're to watch the young talent, the players that will be in the future draft. And the third thing, they expect a high level of play, and they want to see how these guys compete on that level, Brad. And this is the highest level in this conference, and Marty Blake's never been here before. Can you believe that? I the guy's been working it. for the NBA for 150 years. He said, I've never been to Lawrence, Kansas. I said, where have you been? I know. He told me he was on a plane when you fly <laughs> in. Talk to me about that. I can't believe they have the fourth reason. I shot the jumper before the game. They didn't like my release. <laughs> They're worried about your vision. <laughs> uh, inside, the kick out to Paulding. The three rimmed out, and Gooden's got the board. And quickly, the outlet to Miles again. I'll tell you, Collison and Gooden really get up and down the floor quickly. Gooden, the shot fake and the drive. Big time. He's having a monster year. Rebound and scoring from out of California. California's been good to this Kansas program. Have they ever? The Jacques Vaughn's the... Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce is great in the NBA. Rush finally gets his hands on Lily. His second time he's touched it, and Kareem knocks down a three. I was teasing Gooden today. I said, why did you motivate Rush? You ready for this? Rush was in a real slump. He called up his buddy Gooden. Gooden told him, you got to relax. you just got to do your thing. And he said, from that moment, he started hitting. They actually became buddies over the summer. Gooden is on fire. He's putting a show on on national TV. He wants America to know that he's one of the premier players in the land. If I pick my top five now, he's in it, Brad. There's no doubt he's one of the five premier players in America. Off to an eight-point start in the first four and a half minutes. That's Quinn Snyder, former Tukey. Quinn knows it's TV timeout time. 15-31. He could use the break because number zero has already put up eight. professor who wanted to cheer for his science club. It was originally Raw Raw Jayhawk, but a few years later an English professor suggested Rock Chalk because it rhymed with Jayhawk and it symbolized the chalky limestone formations found in these parts. It survived all these years, Brad, and Teddy Roosevelt called it the best cheer he ever heard. I tell you what, I'm glad they changed it to make it rhyme because it sounded funny the old way. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Teddy Roosevelt, wow. Five points. Kansas lead. Missouri trying to cut into it, and they do. And that's a second three for Gilbert. He can get really hot. He's a very streaky shooter. On the other end, block shot. And a 
Russell and a foul inside. Clarence Gilbert trying to make the rotation to the point guard slot really is what we call a combination guard. He's thinking shot, as you can see here. And that's the reason why, from out of Fort Lauderdale, played with Keon Dooling, now in the NBA. His 63rd three-pointer of the season, as Dick said. Now he's got 277 in his great career as an outside shooter. That was not a foul by the way, Johnson. It was a clean block shot. Here's a clean steal. Good. Oh, what a monster jam. Dipsy do, Dunkaroo. The Fog Fanatics love Mr. Gooden. And that's not quite good with a 95 mile an hour fastball. That was a 120 mile an hour flush job. That's a flush job, baby. Ten points for Gooden. He's on pace for a huge night. Nice Here's the pass. give inside. Nice look by Stokes. Trayvon Bryant with the score. And quickly in transition, Kansas scores again. Moshi's first field goal. Lack of communication. Quinn Stein is going to be upset with their defensive transition. Stokes started the year at the point guard slot. And they felt he wasn't defending well enough. And they put him to the bench. And hoping that he brings some energy from the bench. Here's Gilbert, who's a lot better shooter out there as well. What a freeze to think about scoring now with Stokes on the floor. I love Stokes' hairdo. I like anybody's hairdo with your <laughs> ball like I am. Just over six minutes in, Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Michelle Tafoya in Lawrence, Kansas. Great drive, and it's been quite an opening here for Gilbert. I'll tell you one thing, he's improving in terms of the evaluations of the NBA people. Collison in low. Trying to find a handle. Down deep, double teamed. Possession arrow is going to stay with Kansas. We're going to take a look at Gooden right now. Good anticipation. There's the deflection. And then he creates a steal, takes a look back, and has the one-handed power dunk. That was the first turnover of the ball game, and it turned into a quick deuce. Ten points, five for five, and three boards. Not a bad start, huh? Not, not a bad start at all. I'll tell you one thing. You talk about Gooden, and you think about the great players. Obviously, Jason Williams, Mike Dunleavy. You think certainly about Steve Logan having a great year for Cincinnati. David West and Xavier. Outside jumper by Boshi won't go, and it's Stokes who tracks it down to the corner. A chance for Missouri to tie. They got to get some touches to the big guy inside, Mr. Johnson. Kareem Rush has only touched it three times. Here's his third time, and he drops in a triple. Nope, it's just inside the line. That ties it. Well, he's got great range as a shooter. He was preseason choice on everybody's All-American team, but he went through a real slump. In fact, the three losses, he shot really poorly in those three games. He was Iowa, 15. Illinois, and DePaul, he was off. He was 15 for 51. There's goaltending on Johnson, and that means Gooden's got a dozen, and he's perfect. You take a look at Kareem Rush. You can't teach this. I mean, he's got a hand right in his face. Roy Williams told me that today. He said, we can play him tough. I mean, you can't play him any tougher than that. And he still knocks it down. Just had his foot on the line, too. It would have been a three. And lost those three in a row after jumping out nine zip. Got thrashed big time by Iowa at home. Luke Ricker had 31 in that game. Trying to get a backdoor cut and stolen away by Simeon. Simi is a good looking diaper dandy. He lost a stop at knee surgery earlier this year. Stokes and Gooden go to the floor, and this possession area will be Missouri. Simeon's going to be a real quality inside player. His debut, he went for 10 and 11, a double double against Wake Forest. That's Kansas' first turnover. Missouri had a season low six turnovers in their win over the weekend against Kansas State. So they have taken care of the ball better in the last couple of ball games. They're a talented team. They're going to win a lot of basketball games. There's no question when you look at that club. It's just whether or not they're good enough to beat the upper echelon teams. Rush missed the shot. Quinn Snyder. Snyder looking on. He's in his third season as a head coach in Missouri. You know, he's put a lot of energy. He's done a great job recruiting, a lot of excitement, but expectations got carried away. they got to be patient and understand. It's going to take a little while to get where Quinn wants to get. Quinn won 18 his first year, then 20 and 13 last season. And that's a tough game to Duke in the NCAA tournament. Stokes got in too deep. But here's Rush. Rebound is Kansas. And going to have a foul as Miles picked up the loose ball, and then he was fouled. See, Kareem Rush has got to do a better job of utilizing screens in terms of taking advantage of his great talent and his ability. And what he's got to do more of, rather than wanting to look and shoot the jump shot, attack the basket, because he can get to the basket. He's got good ball handling skills. He's an unbelievable talent, and I love his ability. A little bit of that problem that 
Tayshawn Prince has in Kentucky sometimes. They get too comfortable way out there by the three-point line when they've got the body to go inside. 11.54 to go first half. Great ball game brewing early. 21-19, Kansas. Ranked 24th, they were as high as third, and as Dick said, expectations have been so high on Quinn Snyder's team. He talked with us about it. Dealing with expectations was challenging for us. We didn't see ourselves through my eyes as the coach. We saw ourselves through, you know, the guy at the drive throughs eyes or the media's eyes or the TV. And, and um, those are stories. You know, they're going to be written and written no matter what, and they'll build you up. and and they'll just surely tear you down. And we lost a couple games in a row and didn't play well. But uh, I think we've needed to, needed to uh, go through some of that to get where we're going. Where they're going right now is down the list in the top 25. But remember, they have won now six of their last eight, so they're starting to put it back together. Yeah, they really are. And you know, Brad, you got to understand, they started off beating Alabama and beating Iowa in that Guardians uh, NABC coaches tournament mm -hmm. and did a great job beating two quality teams to win that. So that got everybody pumped up big time. Here's a loose ball, and Kansas turns it over again. Their second miscue. And I tell you one thing: if people are patient with Quinn Snyder, with his energy, his work ethic, his teaching ability, he's going to be a star in the coaching fraternity. He's got a flair, doesn't he? Yes, he really does. He's got looks too, man. He's got IQ, a brain. He's got a master's degree. He's got a law degree. Why does he want a coach with a law degree? He's going to lose all that beautiful hair he has on his head. Missouri is two and three on the road this year, and two and three against ranked teams. Their losses to ranked teams with Oklahoma, Illinois, and Iowa the second time. They played Iowa twice, beat them once, lost the other. Yeah, lost that home, really got thrashed. They don't usually lose that home in Columbia. Nice kick out by Johnson. And Paulding buries the outside jumper. The Motor City connection, good inside-outside action. Johnson and Paulding, a great combo. So Missouri back in front by one. I tell you, I'm impressed with Missouri's talent, I can tell you that. They're talented. Miles, nice drive for the freshman. How good is this kid? He was a great quarterback. He was vice president of his class, great student. The Morgan Wooten. He won the award because of his combination of academics and athletics as the student athlete of the year. Unbelievable. Nice combination. Yes, Holding a nice drive on the baseline, but he didn't finish. Three Loose ball, one. three on one. Oh, Good luck to the trail. Are you serious? That's a coach's dream. That's unselfish basketball. He learned that under Dean Smith, the Michelangelo, Roy Williams, a Rose Royce in the coach. That was Wayne Simeon, a freshman, with that beautiful lead to his trailer, the senior Boshi, and it's Kansas now by three. 372 Ws. It's the most of anybody in their first 13 years of coach. And here's a walk inside as Bryant took an extra step. Watch the play here. The play is Heinrich right here. Friesen right there. He made the play, and then he kicks it right out. Look at this here. Friesen. And then he cuts right here. He knows. And there's the open layup. Unbelievable. Just a great job. Just so unselfish. And that's how you win. That's how Texas Tech beat Oklahoma. Being unselfish. Shot selection the other Whoa. night. There's a rejection by Johnson again. He's number one in the conference in block shots. And he showed us why here early. What a conference this is this year in basketball. Did you see the block shot by the big fella Johnson inside. He's a horse. He's, He's 265. He's a back truck man. He's gonna make an all back truck team. He put that guy on the floor. He's got a body. Look at him. Look at him. Follows Boozer. Gooden hasn't missed yet. Well, oh, he's missed, but he. Oh, it. he wanted to do that. Are you kidding me? Are you serious, Mr. Gooden? What an offensive rebound. And a travel by Missouri. That's a momentum builder. Yes, sir. Lee salutes the crowd. Oh, what a play he made there. I he said he hadn't missed yet, and when he did miss, he made sure there was somebody there to clean up himself. Yes, sir. Nobody boxed him out. He's already to the glass. Look at him. He's right there waiting for it. That might have been a play. He might have set that up for himself. <laughs> Seven out of nine. He did miss one other shot. I take it back. 14 points. Miles does what he has to do. Get the ball to the right people. Understand the role of the play guard. Nice drive inside. Nope. Charging foul on Collis. Great job by Missouri rotating over. Collison in high school, who told me today, 101 and 1. Can you believe that? Played for his dad. We're going to take a look at it right here. There's the rotation over it. No doubt about it. Good call. John Clark be right on it. 
He lost good game, he said, to Mount Pleasant. He said, while he was in school, they won 52 at all the last two years. His dad, Dave, was a high school coach for 22 years, including coaching his son. He retired to come and watch his son play now. That's not a bad not idea. Not a bad idea. Five-point Kansas lead. Under nine and a half in the first half. Wide open baseline three goes. That's how you get right back into it, and it's Paulden. Paulden can shoot that jumper from outside, and so can Gilbert. Last touched. Let's see. It'll be Kansas ball. We're going to take a look right here. We're going to watch a little tick off by Rush. There's Paulding with the wing jump shot. They're going to try to attack the basket a little more. Missouri try to drive. Create opportunities off the drive. Gooden wants it down low, uh, but it's the 20, 15 footer rather by Heinrich that goes. I tell you, what a nice screen. Screen away from the ball. He comes off the screen, reads the screen exceptionally well. Nobody gets over the top, and Heinrich's automatic the way he shoots. Just a blistering field goal pace by Kansas. Tough pass inside, stolen. Here comes numbers for the Jayhawks again. Heinrich on the drive, got it, and one. So well drilled fundamentally. They fill lanes the proper way. They get the 45 degree angle. Take a look coming at you right here. There's the kickoff. Gets the lane. Gets the layup. They lead the nation. You can see why in field goal percentage. Absolutely. They always take high percentage shots. They're second in scoring in the nation. To Duke is number one. They're number two. Eight. They 89 and a half points and 50.6 on the field goal percentage that Dick was talking about as Heinrich caps off the three-point play and now it's a seven-point Kansas lead, biggest of the night. Connecticut's number two field goal percentage, followed by Mississippi State and Tennessee Tech. Jeff Lebo, hey, they're undefeated in their conference. Gilbert got his own rebound and too strong the second time. He might get a third chance. He's going to attack more. He's going to attack more. Rush on a fadeaway. Gooden will clear the glass. He is a major league rebounder. Gooden handles the rock really well. Nice ball movement. Boshi's wide open for a three and missed it. And he can shoot the three. 278, a career leader here in Kansas. Gilbert trying to go through traffic and do a foul. Oh, they're going to count it? No, no, no. He's going to pull it out there. Yeah, John Clark. Yeah. Before the shot. NBA, you count that continuation. <laughs> we'll take a look right here. Good with a foul. Clarence Gilbert, leading scorer right now for Missouri, but they find themselves down by seven. In the first half of this one, and Big Monday will continue. Coming up at midnight, it'll be BYU and Utah. Cougars led by Mark Bigelow face Nick Jacobson and the Utes. We look to go to 5-0 in the conference. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. That third game in our triple header will follow SportsCenter. What a rivalry that is. I talked to Jimmy Dykes today about that game, and I'll tell you, Utah, you ready for this? Rick Majerus is doing a great job. They got six guys in their lineup in the conference shooting 50% or better from the three. Not bad. Six guys from 50%. <laughs> Jacobson, Britton Johnson and company, Jimmy Dykes. Dykes and the gang, they're going to have a great one there with BYU at Utah. He's on fire right now. With Dick Vitale and Michelle Tafoy, I'm Brad Nessler. Allen Fieldhouse, Lawrence, Kansas on a big Monday, Big 12 matchup. The hated rivals, Missouri and Kansas, having at it. Calling for three. Off the iron. Rebound's going to be balanced. I'll tell you, any other club would be down about 15 right now. But Missouri's a talented team, and that's why they're able to be in the game here the way Kansas has started, both defensively and offensively. Gage stripped that one out of there to force the turnover. Nice feet. Running jumper. Going to be short. Johnson tried to keep it alive and knocked it out of bounds. We talked about this one goes back to 1907. And this is a 244th meeting. 153 and 90 is Kansas' lead. And you see the numbers at Allen Fieldhouse, but as Dick was talking about six times in the last six years, Missouri has pulled off a win against Kansas, and Kansas has always been ranked when they beat them. I'll tell you, Norm Stewart's down at Palm Springs watching, I guarantee right now. He did a great job. 
when he was at Missouri, I'll tell you that. Good is better than good. Yes, yeah, so he's unstoppable right now. It's a mismatch. Nobody can handle him inside. When Snyder says, why can't I get a couple of my buddies to try and play? I'm like, Jay Billison, get yeah, my gang. <laughs> Guys, I played with a Duke. Hey, we got Duke versus North Carolina tonight. Roy Williams and Quinn Snyder. That's right. And we got that game Thursday night. Duke and Carolina. Carolina got a win yesterday. Broke that losing streak against Clemson. So here's Gooden. And he is good. Gooden is good. He's good and he's better than that. Yes, sir. Three-point play. What a half. Look at the defense right here. I'm telling you, these kids get after it. Ten-point lead now at 12-2. Here's a three by Stokes. Didn't get the roll. Kansas is crashing the boards, too. And it's going to be out of bounds to the Tigers. You know, the two losses they had, they lost to Ball State. Collison was in all kinds of physical problems in that game with Crosby. Ball State was beating everybody yeah, at that time. Yeah, and I don't want to take anything away from Ball State. Certainly played brilliantly out there, but he was cramping. And against UCLA, he got in foul trouble, and Matt Barnes went bananas for about 27 of Nice feed on the baseline. They don't convert, and finally they do. Inside is Bryant. UCLA played exceptionally well in that game after losing a sudden cow. Got a great performance out of Matt Warrens. What a drive. Wave it off. Rick Hartzell says, uh uh, travel. Good call by Rick Hartzell, one of the best in the game. AD at Roy than Iowa. As you look at Roy Williams, I asked him today, what about this club compared to 97 when they went 34 and 2? You're going to see right here, takes a little extra step. That was the team with Pierce, with Franks, and one of my favorite point guards in top, Jock Bull. And a whistle and a foul way out on top. will be on Ballard. That club that Roy Williams had that year was one of the special teams. They were academically solid kids. They won big. And the two games they lost, they lost one to Missouri in double overtime, a real heartbreaker. And they lost a tough one to Arizona in the Sweet 16 and won the national title. And Pierce right now playing the best. about as well as anybody in the NBA. Oh, the best score forward in the game. 6.20 to go, first half. Here's Stokes wide open. He gave up a three. Baseline, maybe one too many moves there. See, Stokes should have shot that shot. Yes, he, he should have. have. Medium range, short shot. He's capable of making that shot. Heinrich picks up the foul. Roy is saying, hey, how about a walk? I can't wait to go down to Missouri. Fred Musburger, I'm going to be down there for Virginia. Hey, what a week Virginia has. Yeah, they're they, loaded, aren't they? They got to play Duke. They go and they'll play Maryland. And they got Missouri yeah. at Missouri. That's not an easy week, Oh, beat. Peter Gillard, that's not <laughs> Cupcake City. Down rush and whistle foul inside. What a conference this year in the Big 12 is. You think about Oklahoma, who's outstanding. Forget about that game with Texas Tech. The way they played that day, Lubbock was unbelievable. But Oklahoma State, you think about Texas, the great job Rick Barnes has done without Chris Owens. You think about Kansas. I mean, what a conference it is. That call on Missouri was three second violation, no foul. Gooden and Heinrich have scored 27 of Kansas 35 points. And here's another traveling violation. This one's on Simeon. Simeon just playing 15 to 20 minutes a night right now. They're being very patient with his time. Coming back from surgery, from arthroscopic knee surgery. A big, strong kid out of Leavenworth. Can't blame him on that. He was hustling for it. Yes, he was. Leavenworth, isn't that the prison? Yep. I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Deep ball goes. That's what they need. It's Gilbert's third of the night. And right now, he's got 278 for his career. And that's the same that Boshi has. And 279 is the Big 12 record, but he also played in the Big 8 at the time. Randy Rutherford from Oklahoma State. So already Big 12 record-wise, these two guys are number one and number two. But because the conference was not formed and Oklahoma State had a guy that had 279, he sort of still has the record, but it's going to fall, and it looks like it's going to fall tonight. I'll tell you, Roy Williams, very intense. The one thing Kansas has also, three guy for dandies that really contribute in a winning environment. Langford, Simeon, and Miles. Nice hustle by Heinrich, knocked it out of bounds. He's Mr. Clutch, Heinrich, I tell you, he's a coach's dream because he does everything coaches want, plus he can stroke the ball. Coached by his dad, Jim, as well, in Sioux City, Iowa. You're not going to have a lot of foot the ball. Kentucky and Florida. Oh, boy. We got the Rowdy Reptiles, the Fox Fanatics. I mean, how much does it get better than that? Stokes. 
Works for the jumper on the baseline. A little too strong. And a rebound to Simeon. Trying to make that little shot on that baseline. Got three freshmen on the floor right now with Simeon Miles and Langford. Langford had hurt his elbow earlier. His left elbow, he was holding on the bench. Strong move inside by Simeon. Boy, he used that 250 on that 6'9 frame. He's got a great body. He's very active. He's very agile. They got a big one coming in named Braves next year. 6'9 and about 265 as well out of junior college. Rush on the drive. Kareem dishes in the corner to Stokes for three. Got it. I'll tell you, Stokes, Rush, and Gilbert, when they're playing well, they can beat anyone in America. They gave Duke an unbelievable battle last year in the NCAA tournament. It was a tough one for Mike Krzyzewski, who said he hated coaching against one of his guys. Wynn Schneider, foul on the floor before the shot. He's got a passion, I'll tell you, there's a passion out in his kid. I call him a kid. I remember when he was playing in a Duke uniform. Nice look outside by Rush. And there's Stokes with the great look, squares his body. He shoots it like my partner, nothing but nylon. <laughs> Boy, they interviewed me today about you. I said all of these things about you. You owe me big time. Entertainment Magazine down in oh, Columbia. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I'm Columbus, Ohio. Pull me up today. I owe you so much. There's no, there's no way I have enough time to pay you back, partner. Do you have a great time down in uh, Kentucky going oh, horse farm? Did we ever? An unbelievable time over the weekend. Miles misses the first free throw and now some mass substitutions. Did you had a better time than Tony Smith had. I sure did. Oh, gee. And of course, that'll make that game tomorrow night on ESPN even more crucial because both Kentucky and Florida lost over the weekend in the SEC. You know, Tubby will get them to get going. The bottom line is they've got to get some point production out of Bogans and Prince. I mean, those two guys guys don't score. They're in trouble. They have no other scoring basically happening on tomorrow, those guys. But they defend well, but they just got to score big plays at clutch time. Five-point Kansas lead with four to go first half. Trying to feed it down the low post to Johnson. We got a timeout. 3.58 till halftime. Back at Allen Fieldhouse, you know, Kansas and Missouri have produced not only one of college rival basketball's greatest rivalries, but some of the greatest names in the game. I mean, you're talking about Hall of Famer Wilt Chamberlain in the 50s, All-American guard John Sunbold, 88 Consensus Player of the Year Danny Manning, Missouri's all-time scoring leader Derek Chivas, two-time All-American Ray LaFrenz, Missouri's career rebound leader Doug Smith, 1998 Consensus All-American Paul and Missouri's career leader in steals and assists, Anthony Peeler. And that is just scratching the surface, Brad and Dick. Boy, that's some serious talent you were talking about there. Wow, I watched Peeler one time in a matchup go for about 40-plus. He was unbelievable on fire in the Missouri-Kansas game. Here's Gilbert on the drive off the glass, and he's been the offense so far for Missouri in the first half. Gilbert did a great job, showed a lot of maturity there, pulled up and shot that little jumper. Rather than taking it right to the goal, he would have been called for a charge. Kansas playing so well, and they lead by only three. And that's because Missouri has some real threats for Gilbert Rush and the ability to make the three. Kansas to inbound Miles will toss it in with 337 in the first half. Oshie hasn't gotten any really good looks. He was one for six from the three in his last game. The one before that, he had four for four. Yeah, he had a season low five points in the win over the weekend over Texas AM. And he needed his jump for that game. Collison, nice move inside. He just didn't finish. Kind of short armed it as he went to the hole. Yeah, he was anticipating Johnson coming over for the tie. Yes. Are it you goes. kidding me? Are you kidding me? Does he have range as a shooter? 16 for Clarence Gilbert and another three. And next four tonight. So Boshi says, hey, anything you can do for three, I can do better. I think they both have 279 threes in their career right now, if I'm not wrong. And that's, that's pretty weird. <laughs> and that ties Randy Rutherford. How about that, huh? Unbelievable. Two best three-point shooters in Big 12 history are dead even career-wise. You don't see that very often. Rush. The left hand. That's what he's got to do more of. Even though he missed that shot, he's going to attack the basket. Langford was so sure Kansas was going to get that rebound. He was already breaking out in transition. Now they can run a bit. Miles all the way. Leaves it for Collison inside. I tell you, Miles had 11 assists against Nebraska. You can see why. He's very unselfish. Boy, Williams. There he is on that sideline. A big time winner. I like Miles because 
because he knows his role on the floor. We're going to watch him penetrate right here. He's going to drive, and he's going to draw, change direction, get a lane, freeze it right here. See, he's already trying to create the angle so he can get the ball inside here. And he does a great job of getting the ball inside. What a clinic I saw the other day. Attacking defenses. Unbelievable. Get a T.O., baby. Oh, oh. You At least they song. love you. Oh, wow. They were great before the game. Coming up, the Mass Mutual Halftime Report and Sports Center in-game are just ahead at halftime. Brian Kenny and Digger Phelps hanging around. Brian and Digger will talk about a Big East battle that preceded us. Also, Brady or Bledsoe? Man, how many times is Bill Belichick going to be asked that question in the next 72 hours? What'd he says, think? Wednesday afternoon, I'll let you know. Just leave me alone. I'll just make the decision. Get it all over with. I'll tell you, what a great win by the Patriots. Troy Brown was absolutely sensational. Patriots to win the Super Bowl. Oh, there you go. You had, you had three more games to make that prediction this week and you want to do it on big money. Uh, team, de team of destiny. I can feel it. Tipped inside and Boshi comes up with a loose ball. The outlet to Heinrich and he's going to slow it. And Missouri turns it over when they were trying to cut into a five-point lead. Heinrich on a turn. The rebound is Gilbert's. And he's been the man. They're going to get Johnson some touches though. Get him some touches inside. On a runner, Paulding's been pretty good as well. Down in the Motor City as well. Played at Renaissance High School. Renaissance High School. Johnson played at Pershing High in Detroit. Packed house at Allen Fieldhouse. We're under two minutes in the first half, and this one has been everything it was built to be. Number 24, Missouri, and number two, Kansas. The Jayhawks in front, and Kansas hanging right with them on the road. Going to try to create an opportunity for Langford from that wing. Wood Snyder says put the brakes on, Clarence, and he did. They'll try to set the half-court play with 120 left in the half and 20 on the shot clock. It's so difficult to make an adjustment for being a scorer and have to score his mentality to play the point. Rush didn't get the roll, but Johnson's there for the rebound, trying to stick it back, and it's still Missouri ball. That's a tough roll for a youngster to make that adjustment. They put the ball in your hands, and they want you to get everybody else involved, and you know you can score, man. It is very tough. So 109 in the half. And a three-point Kansas lead, but Missouri can cut into that. Whoops, not that way. They're not going. Inbounds play. Rush puts it too deep for Johnson, and they just flat threw away an opportunity there. Yeah, you don't want to give those opportunities away, not on the road. You know, it's amazing. There's only two teams with one loss right now. Cincinnati, 19 in a row they've won with that suffocating defense, and Duke is sitting there at 18-1, and, and only two teams have two losses. Kansas, who we're seeing here, and Perry Clark and Miami, Florida. Great job Perry's doing in the Big East. 17 and 2. And a foul down low is good and had it in the low block. I don't want to cheat him. He's 18 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert picks up the foul. And the inbounds play. And just over a minute to go in the half. What a great environment here. I'll tell you, really special. James Naismith, coached here, the founder of the game of basketball in 1891. To Heinrich around a pick down the lob down low to the man of the hour. Good. Lost it going up. Nice defense by the Tigers. Right now trying to spread the court, put it in Gilbert's hands. There's about a 12 second difference on a shot clock in the game clock. Miles matched up right now with Gilbert on the perimeter. Rush loves that fadeaway. And he got it. You can see why he loves it. I'll tell you, that's unbelievable. Very difficult to block that shot. Comes from a basketball family. Brother Jerron Rush went to UCLA. He left school too early. Fortunately, his brother didn't follow that path. Almost unbelievably, a one-point game with as well as the number two team in the country has played, and Boshi almost lost it. Especially the, hustling on defense. Especially the way they started. They put it on fire like they did. Miles didn't go. Missouri's got a chance to actually lead at the break. And as good as Gilbert's been from deep, you never know. The shot doesn't go. What a first half, though. Kansas at home, holding serve, but by only a point. 43-42, Michelle Tafoya is with Quinn Snyder. And, well, we lost, we lost Quinn to the locker room. But the Mass Mutual Halftime Report, Brian and Digger coming up with Sports Center in game as well. 43 to 42, fellas. All right, Brad, Dick, thank you very much. Digger is still here, though. He didn't go back to the locker room. We'll talk football. Marty is in. What about Norv Turner? And who do you like at quarterback? Brady or Bledsoe? All that and some big East basketball coming up. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And in part by CompUSA, where America buys technology. Three, number 24, Missouri 42. Brett Nessler, Dick Vitale, Michelle Tafoya back at Allen Fieldhouse. You know, we came into this one expecting a lot. We got a lot. Gooden was better than Gooden. He was sensational. But you know, we talk about it all the time. The great equalizer. Here's a Kansas team that shoots 59%. They're only up by one. They're up by one because Missouri did a fantastic job shooting the three. They outscored Kansas by six threes that they made more than Kansas. As you take a look up here, highlighted, look at an eight for 15 versus two for five. That's an 18 point plus margin right there showing once again how the three point shot has really changed the complexion of college basketball. Gilbert did a great job shooting the three. They got to get some scoring inside on the Johnson. This is a very talented. I'm really impressed. Really impressed with Missouri's personnel. They're a lot better than what I anticipated. You're good 17 points out of an eight for 10 first half. And here he starts the second half the same way. Why not? Why not go to them all the time? They have no inside to check in. He posts up so well. You can see they do a great job teaching how to get post position. He was calling. It wasn't bad in the first half either with double figures. They do go in low. That's what Dick was talking about, but Johnson missed him. Good will clear it. He's got a converted here. Using that big body. Rush made an excellent pass. By the way, that's good in seventh rebound as well. Heinrich on the runner. I really love this kid. I'll tell you one thing. You're picking a basketball team. You want him on your side. He guards. He makes shots. He's unselfish, and he plays with great tenacity. The lead right back to five, and here's a touch foul. No, it's a five-second call. Quinn Snyder's team ended that first half in good shape, Michelle, and they get a chance to talk to Quinn from the locker room. transition he said Kansas made it tough and the Missouri defenders were losing their players they were supposed to be on in transition also he said Missouri needs to work harder on offense to get the ball inside he said we cannot win this thing being a jump shooting team Brad yep that's what Dick was just talking about that Johnson or somebody's gonna have to do some damage inside here's Miles getting a weak side rebound Heinrich for three got it he can shoot the three baby better than 50 percent last year when Snyder gets a T.O. At Big Monday presented by Bud Light and nothing light about the way Kansas has started this half, Dick, a 7-0 run. Well, they really are known for that. Roy Williams has well come out of the locker room. As you see Miles, he kicks it back out. He says, I want an assist, so why not give it to a guy that's a better than 50% shooter? Perfect floor for you young kids out there to follow through the great rotation. The Heinrich maneuver. This is going to be a team to be reckoned with from the postseason. With 15, including that last three that's put them up by eight. Trying to dish inside, and finally they do get some work done inside and a chance for a three-point play. And that was Clarence Gilbert. Made a great play attacking the basket, trying to get people involved as well as thinking offense. He's doing a solid job today. And there he is beating the Kansas team defensively, and Johnson with the score inside. Came out of a great high school, Persian high school, with Spencer Hayward, the rough Simpson, Steve oh, Smith. Oh, I don't know if he called glass there. I don't think he did. But he'll take it. He called that one, baby. That was their first trip to the free throw line. It comes almost two minutes into the second half, and it is a three-point play for Johnson, and it cuts the lead to five. And the reason for that is they haven't gone inside. Perimeter jump shooting. Collison comes up short in the paint, but it comes out to Heinrich. He's thinking about a three. <laughs> Realized where he was and got it to Collison. Now it's Boshi for three. Yes. I'll tell you what threat shooting that jump shot. Boshi and Heinrich, great shooters. Rush in a hurry. Didn't get it, but did get the rebound. Gilbert will try a three. Boshi the rebound. Handles by eight, biggest lead of this half. Look at the excellent spacing. Great motion, the passing game, lead the nation in field goal percentage efficiency. Gooden with a hook. Got it. Why not? High percentage. A 10-foot shot. Oh, they are executing and playing so well. The only thing that's keeping Missouri in the game has been the trifecta. Look at the crowd. They're standing up. Oh, the four fanatics. 21 for Drew Gooden. The lead is 10. That's as big as it's been. Another 
Carroll. Oh, that's a foul on Gilbert. They are having a tough time getting Kareem Rush. Rush and foul. Look at Boshi shooting that jump shot. The trifecta. And then look at Good in great post position. Look how he spreads really wide. He protects the basketball, the little jump hook. And there's the conversion. Very dangerous time for Missouri right now as they trail by 10. Miles. What a move inside. Oh, what a superb, quick crossover. Explosive about a Portland in Oregon. Jefferson High School State Champs his junior year with Michael Lee's on the team as well. Kansas going for the juggler right now in the first three minutes of the second half. This place is as loud as any place I've been in all year. They are alive and well here tonight. Stokes dishes outside. Three-pointer. Won't go. Who's going to win the scramble? Gooden had a hand on it, and he got out of there with it. To Heinrich. To Boshi. He'll dump it right inside. This could be a killer. Picks up the foul and the crowd momentarily quiets. That would be one great matchup, Kansas and Duke. You think superstars don't go to the floor on this oh, team? Forget it. All great teams, they do this. All great teams. You hustle, you scrap, you claw. That's why you win. You play as a team. Always make the extra pass. There'll be six teams this year out of this conference in the NCAA tournament. There's no doubt about that. These are two of them, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, who are missing. Well, you've got to certainly think about Texas as well. I believe Texas, what a job Rick Barnes has done, especially after losing Chris Owens, T.J. Ford, great penetrator. I tell you, they're doing a great job keeping the ball away from Rush. They're making it so tough for him to get any touches, and he's got to move a little bit better without the ball. That's one part of his game he still has to improve on, how to get free. 17 to 3 opener in the first four minutes. And a, thing, and a thing of beauty. Just like the Rush to go off the battle, man. It's a thing of beauty. Rush trying to feed the baseline. Nice pass. I'll tell you, Green is really being unselfish. Looking for the open man. Good two bad game. Right playing on good. He's got a tough task right here. Got a lot of skills. Came out of California, highly rated, but did gain eligibility to the middle of last year. So he's really just in the infancy of his career. Foul on Kansas, but they lead by 13. 100 years, it can get pretty intense. Roy Williams, 14 years of it. He knows all about it, Kansas and Missouri. The fierceness of the competition on the court. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, I was at North Carolina for 10 years, and I know how hard we played against Duke and, uh, or Virginia when Ralph Sampson was there. And, and yet uh, it hasn't always been Kansas and Missouri 1-2 in the league, but it's always been Kansas and Missouri 1-2 when it came to the competitiveness of the games and, and how hard the kids played and how badly they wanted to win. Right now, Kansas looks like they are playing harder and wanted better, but uh, they're... I think just a better team right now in the last four minutes. Well, you know, you take a look right here at their records in the regular season versus each other versus the rest of the Big 12. There's the numbers. But you know the bottom line, Roy Williams, 12 consecutive NCAA birds, 12 years in a row winning 20 or more games. They went to the Final Four in 91 and 93. The lead 8 and 96 got beat by Syracuse. Oh, she picks up a cheap foul on a touch of Stokes. And one area they still have to really work and recruit is a legitimate point guard in Missouri. Bringing in a combination guard McKinney next year from out of Bashan High School out of St. Louis. An excellent talent. Ooh, had a little trouble getting the ball inbound. And almost.
almost lost it. You know, you could have a beautiful car, a beautiful goal Rolls Royce. If you don't have the engine to make it go, you're in trouble. I thought you were going to say a steering wheel. Because <laughs> <laughs> you really, here's this kid being asked to be a point guard, and he is a big time scorer, Clarence Gilbert. Rush trying to leave it, and lost it. He's good in the outlet. Heinrich on the run. Foul. He's having a tough night thus far, Kareem Rush. He's got to move without the ball. He has a tendency to stand around and become too stationary. Let's check in with Michelle. Well, you guys, in addition to the inflated expectations this season, Quinn Snyder says the theme of his team is that they're young, and that means a little immature. He said they can look like world beaters, but they're also prone to letdowns. He said it's a team that lacks the full understanding of what it takes to play well all game, every game. And as you've been saying, so go the Tigers. Yeah, and all you have to do is have a four-minute dry spell like they have had to start this second half, and a game can disappear on you in a hurry. And now they find themselves now by 14 and now 15 as Andres knocks down both free throws. You know, Michelle said as Rush goes, they go, and then loss against the ball, he's 5 for 18. He's 6 for 15 against Illinois. He's 4 for 18 against Iowa when they lost those three games in a row. That adds up to 29 percent, 15 out of 51. And that's really trouble. That means you go to a loser's circle. Whoa! Gooden sent that one all the way to the Missouri bench. He's too important to that basketball team. He almost sent it to the Missouri state line. Watch yeah. this one. But the bottom line is you want to keep it in play. Good shot blockers, the great ones over the years. Keep the ball in play. Bill Russell, and you think of David Robinson, and you think of all the great shot blockers. Keep it in play. Hauling. Lost the hand. Too much standing around. Missouri not getting enough motion offensively. And I saw a motion on Saturday in Texas Tech against Oklahoma. When you have movement, it's very tough to defend teams on the third and fourth pass if you're getting motion away from the basketball. Only guy that scored for Missouri this half is Johnson, the big fella. That's only five points. Collison cleans up. Great hands. Collison with the catch in traffic. Langford threw it off balance, but Collison with a great catch. It's soon to get out of hand. 17-point Kansas lead. And look at the intensity defensively. Here's Johnson again, backing in on Collison with a hook. Johnson's had some big games this year. 20 and 18 with the ball, 23 and 15 with Kansas State. Quinn Snyder trying to coach him and keep him involved. Right now it's slipping away, 64 to 47. He's such an intense competitor, and he's such a great young guy with a good basketball IQ. He will be a star, trust me, in the coaching fraternity. He's been involved in five Final Fours, three as a player, two as an assistant coach. On the other end, it's a 19-point lead. Remember that game, Simeon, he's going to be special. Simeon is going to be special in a Jayhawk uniform. He's just waiting his time. I love this crowd. You're talking about a sixth man. What? I give a seventh man. Stokes inside nice feed. Oh, and he missed a dunk. Oh, that hurts. That hurts your pride. That hurts your ego. That hurts your team. And this hurts even more if they score here. And they're going to go to the free throw line, and it's Johnson, and he uh, better watch out so he doesn't get a tee. He almost sent that ball into the Raptors. Could you see the extra pass by Gooden? We're going to watch right here. He goes up really strong. Sort of loses control of the basketball, Arthur Johnson, a very good player. I'll tell you, Pauling and Johnson are going to be outstanding players. They're only in their second year. Blank as well. they got a lot of good young talent, Missouri. The fans have to be patient. Keith Langford at the free throw line. That's in his first point. Can't wait to see the Antlers on Sunday down there in Columbia. With Snyder 2-2 two two in his early career with Roy Williams. Or many guys can say they're 500 with Mr. Williams. That's for sure. You see the difference in free throws, although there has not been that many by either team. Langford drops them both down. It's a 21-point lead. 25-5 run to start this half for Kansas. Langford's a slasher. He's a scorer. Look at the double down low. Got to get motion. Can't just have one guy pound the ball. Gilbert's going to force a three and got it. He's been the only guy they could count on consistently. He's got 19. He's got that great body. He hooked up with Keon Dooling, played in high school at Dillard and Fort Lauderdale. 
Dillon left Missouri. He's out there with the Clippers now. 13 minutes left, an 18-point lead. For number two, Kansas. Brad Nestor, Dick Vitale, Michelle Tafoya, and Alec Fieldhouse were the number two team in the country. He's put on a show. Gooden from 17. A little too strong this time. Where are you, Mr. Rush? Not on the floor now. And now Stokes turns it over, ball the ball. They go as Mr. Rush goes, and he's had a subpar night, and they've had a subpar performance. Sixty-eight to fifty. There's the scoring in the half. Unbelievable start in his opening seven minutes for Kansas. You know, it was very misleading in the first half. What kept them in the game, and Quinn Snyder was just that with Michelle, the three-point shot, right. laying on the perimeter. And he said, we're not going to win this game shooting jump shots. we got to get tougher. Super Tuesday tomorrow on ESPN with two rivalry week dandies at seven. Big Ten battle number 12, Illinois and Ohio State. Buckeyes trying to stay atop the Big Ten. And then Dick and I will be at the Odom in an SEC matchup at Florida and Kentucky. Catch the action on Super Tuesday tomorrow night on ESPN. Yeah, the rowdy, rowdy reptiles will be going bananas down there. We'll get a chance to see them. Illinois got beat by 30. 30 by uh, Indiana. Yeah. 31. Indiana made 17 trifectas. There's why that game tomorrow night is so important in the east of the SEC. Kentucky and Florida both coming off losses. Georgia lost too, but they need to try to move up now as you're getting down to nitty gritty time in conference play. I think Vanderbilt gets no publicity, but they're a solid club at 13 and 6. Beat Georgia the other day. There was a bunch of two-point games in the SEC, and then Kentucky lost to Alabama by three at Rush. So a lot of strange happenings in the SEC. It's not easy any place. Gilbert, short. See, now they're going to start pumping threes all over the place. Stokes now brings it back up. 15 on the shot clock, calling on the drive. And he's fouled. Quinn Snyder was one of the early stars in the era down there at Duke University. Roy Williams, 10 years under Dean Smith at North Carolina, graduated at North Carolina. Coached our buddy Brad Doherty yep. in high school. The winningest percentage, third highest among active coaches. His numbers are absolutely frightening. When you look at his numbers, 372 wins in 13 plus years. I mean, I'm not a mathematical genius, but I'll tell you, that's about 27 or 8 wins a year. See, you taught math. Don't, you don't shortchange yourself. <laughs> yes, it's great. That ninth, that ninth Gary to remedial math comes back to help you all the time. Uh, I'll tell you what, they had some great kids back in East Brotherhood, New Jersey, Franklin School. Alden got them both. That's a lot of years ago, Brad. I had a few strands of hair at that time. I've met some of your players. Yeah. That's a strange group. <laughs> Great bunch of players. <laughs> and out of bounds to Missouri. I love these environments where basketball is such a passion. The fans, the coaches, the players. You know, you think about it. I know where you were over the weekend. I spent time at Rupp Arena Saturday night. Allen Fieldhouse Monday, the O-Dome on Tuesday in Gainesville. That ain't bad. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. I was with the mayor of Lubbock. <laughs> Bobby Knight. Gilbert missed inside. Rebound comes off. Oshie on the run. Great spacing. 15, 17 feet apart. Very tough to double up. He understands his role, this kid Miles. He just understands his role. Allison Strong inside, just couldn't quite finish, and Pauling will clear the glass and try to bring it for the Tigers on the run. All the way. Nice drive. He's going to be a big-time star. He's got star ability. He and Johnson both. The other way. Out of control. Yep. That's way a, out of control for Langford. That's a freshman mistake right there. Totally out of control. He'll be coming out, and Hydra will be coming in. Kansas in the second half, though, and Missouri trying to hang in there. Down 15 with 11 minutes, 12 seconds remaining from Lawrence. Once I turn me up, back.
second big Monday presented by Bud Light a 15 point lead for the number two team in the country and looking all of that number two ranking as you take a look at the top ten. Well you take a look at our top ten Cincinnati with 19 in a row unbelievable defense McElroy and Stokes on a wings outstanding defensive players Logan sensational we'll see Virginia on Sunday against Missouri they got a date though before that to worry about a date with Maryland and Florida who loses to Arkansas there's a team you watch Arkansas in the postseason they're a team I'd want to stay away from in the SEC tournament and the kid Hargo had 35 right. as they won that game in overtime against Florida as you saw the lower part of that ranking Alabama has found out how to win on the road now and they're going to be dangerous and Syracuse was in the 10th spot and they lost tonight in the game that preceded us to Georgetown rather handily so they're going to slip down a little bit next week you saw Alabama I think one of the reasons they're even improved is they have now Mr. Maurice Williams well, Williams their point guard has certainly helped their cause yeah he knows how to play at the point there's Stokes out of control right there lost his starting role Williams with a solid staff. Neil Doherty, Joe Holiday. Neil Doherty's a guy that's going to get a lot of calls for jobs. Down on the low block. Good. Trying to swing around. Had it pinned off the glass by Johnson. Nice block by the big fella. He's very agile and mobile for a big guy. Very soft on his feet. Rush on a fadeaway. Got it. They need that. He was 3 for 13 up to that moment. Kareem Rush. They really go as he goes. They feed off. Look at that oh. quickness. Nobody cut him off at the pass. Hey, can you imagine? He must have been unbelievable as a rollout quarterback. Yes. He was unbelievable speed and quickness. And he defends really well. Goes down there. I thought there was a whistle. There wasn't. Stokes knocks down the jumper. You know, reminiscent of him going down with the ball in his hands against Ball State in that game when he slipped at the end of the game. Collison pull up jumper. Yes. What an inside outside combo. He's been quiet tonight, but he's just a solid winner, Nick Collison. He is good, and I really believe in the best one two combination on a baseline. That was a pretty big shot because Missouri had quietly cut it down to 13. Rush on a fadeaway from three, and he doesn't get it, and Collison will clear it. Kansas with 9.40 left. 73 58 here at Allen Fieldhouse in front of a packed house with Dick Vitale and Michelle Tafoya. I'm Brad Nessler. Heinrich got another three. He has got a beautiful stroke. He really does. He's got a do That's not just an accident. He's not a street shooter. He can flat out shoot the jab. Like I told you, it's the Heinrich maneuver. He's yes, got sir. 20. And thank God for the Heinrich maneuver. I would be sitting <laughs> with you. <laughs> you got to stay away from those pretzels at oh. ball games. Stokes had a notion, and Miles tapped it away from him momentarily. See, everybody stands when one guy has the basketball. Don't get enough player movement. Gage had it blocked inside by Collison. Here's a lob. Oh, what a great pass. Chance for a three-point play. What a great look. Oh, they love it here in Lawrence. They love this team, and you can see why. They're so unselfish. This is a special basketball team, people. This is one of America's premier basketball teams. And how to play the game. Play together. Give up the ball. But certainly if you're a Missouri fan, you don't like That's it. That's right. Drew Gooden, 23, a chance to make it 24 and does. Missouri can't let this game psychologically get them down after tonight. They're going to regroup and got to understand that a lot of teams are going to get pounded by this club. And they get a date in Columbia. It could be different like it's been the last two years. Michelle, the NBA scouts, are they drooling on Gooden? Oh, they certainly are. They say that he's playing exactly as they expected him to play. They knew what they were getting with Gooden tonight, but they've also been impressed with Kirk Heinrich. Now, one scout talked to me about Kareem Rush. He said he's improved a lot from last year in terms of his decision-making, but he needs at least one more year to work on his guard skills. But absolutely, they love Drew Gooden and Kirk getting some points here tonight guys and Heinrich's gonna step to the free throw line I think the one area that he has to work on more than ball handling skills is the art of moving without the basketball that is a special art too many players that are talented think all they got to do is pound the ball to the floor I tell you he's moving without it right now Carlos Boozer he's averaging 23 points a game and 12 rebounds in his last six games 
Clockerty's talking about who's going to shoot the free throws. Heinrich was up there to shoot free throws, and they're going to have to give it up to Goodman. And there's Heinrich knocking down the three. He's got a season high tonight at 20. But it's Gooden, his partner, that's going to the free throw line. To win big and to have a chance to win an NCAA title, you've got to have three legitimate big-time guys that can help you score and win. And they have that with Heinrich, Gooden, and Collison. You look at all the great teams, they possess that, Brad. You can't get away with just one or two guys. Gooden with 25, the leading scorer in the Big 12, showing why. Drops in both free throws. Only 13 teams out there in conference play that are undefeated. Missouri had a great win over Xavier when Rush was 24 and 12 off the glass. He had a good Xavier team with David West, who's such an important part of that Xavier team. It's on an unbelievable run right now, that modest club. The lead has swelled to 23 with 8.20 to play. And Missouri's had some good wins this year, beating Alabama, beating Iowa, beating Xavier. Eight on the shot clock. Rush working against Heinrich. Fades to that baseline again, and he drops it in. See, his scoring is basically off the dribble. He's got to learn to use the screen, come up without the basketball, put some curl moves. Coaches are really trying to work with him in that area, talking to Lane Odom, Tony Harvey. He's got a solid staff there at Missouri. Trying to feed the low post, and taking it out of bounds was Missouri. So it'll be Kansas ball when we come back, and they lead by 21. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by Bud Light. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Heinrich, the big three. This team, number two in the country, they'd like to add another banner to the Raptors of Allen Fieldhouse to match their last championship. As we flash back, Oklahoma and Kansas, Coach Tupp's team, a running, gunning bunch of Sooners. And they were looking good, but it was Danny and the Miracles who had the last laugh. Danny Manning with the throwdown. And Larry Brown's Kansas team, a winner for the national championship at 88, 83 to 79. That was an outstanding basketball game. When you look at Oklahoma that year with Mookie Blaylock and they had Ricky Gray, Stacy King and company, but it was Danny Manning and the gang, as you said, Danny and the Miracles. They were 12 and 8 at one time. Thinking about the NIT. Yep. 12 and 8. Heinrich with a backdoor cut. Collison almost got it to him. He got it to Gooden instead. The rebound off the misses rush. He's got great skills with the ball in his hand. He's got to give it up and cut without it. Yes, tendency, tendency to give it up and then stand. See, all over him defensively, forced a bad pass and a turnover. Good. What a pass that was. And inside it goes. Dropped by Langford and a chance for a three-point. Well, Langford is the scorer. He's got scoring ability. He attacks the basket. He's a diaper dandy. Nice pass by Gooden. There's the big guy showing his passing skills. And there's the drive by Langford. Lays it on the glass. Left-handed. Boy, go to the free-throw line. Boy, for the freshman out of Fort Worth, Texas. Boy, Williams got to really be pleased. With, look, look, smiling. He must be really pleased. <laughs> Mitchell Holiday smiling. I can't believe it. They can't play much better than they've played here in the second half. I'll tell you that. They put on a performance, an A-plus performance here in the second half. They had the biggest advantage they've had all night with 7.20 left. Roy can sit comfortably, I think. At least for a while, he's up 24. Right now, if you're playing and his kids, they just can't quit. They got to just keep battling and battling and play certain spurts. Play like in five minutes. Yep, five minute segments. Well, in two minute segments, maybe. They're running out of five minute segments. There's only seven to go. And possession will stay with Missouri, but good hustle defensively by Boshi and company. chance of coming back in this game. I can flat out tell you that, Mr. Nesta. Collison gets no a standing chance. over there from the student section. This club has been on fire and defended really well. 
Rush, quick moves inside, and he scores. He's got scoring ability, there's no doubt. He had 21 a game last year. He's had a lot of big moments this year as well. He's got a quiet 13 right now. Yeah, you can't really get down on a kid and say every time they lose, it's his fault. Certainly not his fault. His teammates are involved as well, but he's so important to the team. Good in the kick out. Boshi to Heinrich. Got it. Boshi and Heinrich. You do it, I'll do it. Doesn't matter. The bottom line is we are going to produce. There's no stop in this Jayhawk team tonight. Like the James Naismith would be mighty proud. The inventor of the game who coached the Kansas and had a losing record. He'd be smiling, smiling, watching them play. They'd have an awful busy guy clearing out that peach basket tonight. 87 to 62. Gooden feeds down low. Gives it up to his teammates and a foul on the baseline. How unselfish is that right there? I mean, look at Boshi. You're going to give it up. He says, I know you feel it tonight, Kirk, so I'm going to give it up, and you're going to buy me some lunch tomorrow <laughs> because you're going to be BMOC, big man on campus here in Lawrence. This is the third game in six days for Kansas, and they get a little bit of a breather after tonight. They don't play again until Saturday, so they win as decisively as it appears they're going to They're going to have a nice couple days ahead of them. It's not like they won't practice tomorrow, but... Wayne and Margaret Simeon looking out as their son is at the line. Yeah, right, the local kid from Leavenworth took the max foul. Falkenstein, 56 years behind the microphone, one of the legends of broadcasting. And he told me their journey's been unreal. North Dakota, they've been to Princeton, New Jersey, Hawaii, Maui, they've been to California. They've been traveling all year. That North Dakota thing wasn't too good to him because of... The flying conditions, they ended up traveling 13 hours to bus. get back home. They went there because of Boshi, wanted yeah. to get the chance to right. play. That's something that he learned under Dean Smith. Out of Valley, Boshi out of Valley City, North Dakota, got to play at home and had a great game in that one. As a matter of fact, I see tonight 23. Tonight he has 13. Heinrich has 23. Gooden has 26. And Gooden has another rebound and another double-double, and that's 16 for the year. I got a feeling Virginia better lace them up on Sunday. This is going to be an angry basketball team, Missouri. Gooden beat Simeon down low, and he got mugged again. This time, Stokes got it. That was a great game last year, but I'm going to tell you one thing. Peter Gillen's club better come down there ready to play because I got a feeling in Columbia, the Antlers are going to be going bananas, and they are going to be flat out ready emotionally to bounce back from this unbelievable situation here tonight. Look at this reaper three at the line. You know why? Very simple. You want to stand and shoot jump shots. And Quinn Snyder had talked about that. You got to attack the basket. You can't just be a perimeter shooting team. Simeon's got seven points as Rush comes back in. And a huge ovation for Gooden as he goes to the Jayhawk bench. The Simeon kid started at the Kansas basketball camp, Dick, when he was in sixth grade. Do you think he's been around this program a while, wanting yeah. to wear this uniform? That's where you get a little familiar with the youngster. You get a chance to recruit him. And he gives him some toughness with that wide body, about 260, 265, and he knocks down both free throws, and this one is way out of hand. 91, 62. Johnson, the kick out. Here's Paul as the three. Nope, up and over. Paul. Holden, certainly Johnson, they got to attack the basket, but they got to have guards to get up the ball on the inside so they can really take it to the goal. The bottom line is you're not going to go to the free throw line and get opportunities, easy points, just shooting jump shots. Kansas over its season average now. They came in averaging 89 and a half a game, as Dick said earlier, second only to Duke. They've got 91 on the number 24 team in the country. Here's a kick out by Heinrich. Three-pointer. Ferguson got that one, his first basket. Ferguson did a great job on the inside, really was aggressive. Donaldson goes to the hole with the left hand. Shows that he can use either hand. Got that nice step to the basket, 101 and one. Unbelievable in high school. Now Collison's in double figures. And good at leaving the cheers on the sideline. Pull up jumper, deep ball by Gilbert. He had a lot of those in the first half, and he's going to get the loose ball after the miss. Now Rush will try one. They miss a couple outside the arc. 
Kansas trying to hustle for the rebound and couldn't get it down in the corner. 4.15 left here. Super Bowl edition from New Orleans of Sports Center. Rich Eisen, Steve Levy, and the gang. Super Bowl teams have arrived. The question of the night. Championship MVP in the spotlight on this game. Kansas and Missouri in the spotlight shining brightly right now. The number two team in the country with 96 points. Just outstanding performance. There's no other way to describe it. Defensively, offensively, shot selection. If you had to chart and evaluate their efficiency, it's been A-plus all night long from the moment the game started. And the only reason it was close at halftime, it was you. Yes, sir. The differential at the three. Gilbert kept them in the game. They made eight threes versus only two for Kansas. But Kansas came out with a renewed commitment to start the second half. A 25-5 run to start the second half. So if you're just joining us, a 43-42 halftime game has become what we have now with 408 left. 96-64. And there's the guy that had the huge night, 26 points, 10 rebounds. And as I mentioned earlier, a Big 12 leading 16th double-double on the season. And certainly a first-team All-American. He would make my first team top five in the nation. That three-pointer won't go for Heinrich. Collison gets a tough rebound. Trying to leave it on the baseline. Simeon goes strong again. And drew a foul. Always looking for one another. Always thinking about getting a better shot. Getting that high percentage shot, and that's why they lead the nation in field goal percentage. Allen Field, Aston Lawrence, Kansas has been rocking since three hours before this thing started, and it continues to do so as their team has run away here in the second half from Missouri. And en route to its 18th victory in 20 outings. First half, it was 43 to 42. You can see what it's become in the second half, courtesy of a near perfect performance here in this 17 minutes, or almost 17 minutes, by Kansas. Simeon knocks down both free throws. What a night for the Jayhawks. Well, in Durham, North Carolina, they have Shusevskyville. Here in Lawrence, you, well, you could call it, I guess, the campground at Allen Fieldhouse. The students started lining up for Missouri tickets on Sunday. No, not yesterday, a week ago Sunday. <laughs> Some of them told me this is the biggest game of the year, several calling it their Super Bowl. minute or two my top five in a nation right now if I had to pick my five best players in the country my all Rolls Royce team Rush missed a three and I got a feeling one of them's in this house I agree with you Kansas has five players in double figures led by Gooden with 26 a little over three minutes left as Collison misses on a baseline drive I like this Missouri team. I think they're going to bounce back. They ran into a buzzsaw tonight. Remember last year they lost here big and then came back and beat Kansas down in Columbia. Allison baseline hook. Chance for a three-point play. Just take a look how it changes. All you have to do is look at Oklahoma beat. They beat Texas Tech by 26. They got beat by the That's good at right there, showing his variety of ways of scoring. Offensive rebound, attacking the basket, posted inside, baseline jumper. Would he be one of your best players? Oh, no doubt about it. <laughs> no doubt about it. Here, I'm going to give you my top five. I want you to tell me what you think of these five. I'm going to go my backcourt, Jason Williams, without a doubt, and Juan Dixon of Maryland. That's my backcourt. Then I'm going to go with Mr. Good enough front, and then I'm going to talk about a guy, David West. Remember, he is outstanding. Xavier. A lot of people don't know about him at Xavier. They've won 10 in a row, and he's the key reason on the inside. And my fifth guy, Michael Dunleavy. That's my top five in the nation. If I were voting today on my Rolls Royce Super 5. Can't argue with you, too. Calling Mr. Outside Jumper. His last shot, by the way, was just inside the three-point line. Can you imagine? I'm just thinking about this here. I mean, can you imagine? Two 
six because Carlos Boos is not far right. behind. And now here comes Langford and Miles out to a standing ovation. You got to credit the coaching staff at Kansas. Roy Williams and his guys had this club really prepared. Was in his office today. Had his buddy there, Jerry Bell, played at North Carolina in the early 70s. Was the head of Congress there for a while, and uh, he was in his office. And you could see, just Roy was so proud to have a former North Carolina guy there with him. Ballard trying to kick out on the baseline. Spin move and a good one, but too strong on the shot. And the ball loose. Inside. Whoa. Oh, somebody tell them they're winning like they are. Nice this hustle. Could, oh, yeah, that's why you win, though. It's hustling, scrapping, and early winning right now by 24. Who do we lose on press row? Let's oh. see. <laughs> Duck. <laughs> they winning by 32, man. I look at the board, I saw the wrong numbers. 32. There we go. Everybody's got their seat back. Well, no, not really. Winning by 32 and just diving in the stands. Dive That's the impressive. Stands. That is. That is impressive. You better believe a coach has showed the kids that too. Ball last touch by Missouri. Out of bounds to Kansas. Jeff Carey will inbound in the backcourt with under two minutes left. It's 101 to 69. Jeff Carey's been around the program four years. Big guy has given him a lot of good minutes throughout his career coming off that bench. Dad was a standout player for Missouri, as a matter of fact, in the mid-60s. Well, you know, Missouri's had a tough time since 94, getting by the second round. In 95, they beat Indiana, and then lost when Tyus Edney went the length of the court. Speak of Jeff Carey, and he delivers. I was to UCLA, and then UCLA went on with Jimmy Eric and won the national title. 99, they lost to New Mexico in the first round. 90, 2000, lost to Carolina. And last year, beat Georgia by a point and lost a tough one to Duke. And I think that's where the expectations started. Last year, with that tough effort against Duke. And people got a little carried away. Well, that says it all. Sports Center indeed is next. Post game coverage will follow on ESPN News, including, I'm sure, what will be a happy Roy Williams news conference in the. Kansas press area yes, as this sir. team's en route to its 18th win five straight they'll be five and one against ranked teams and more importantly for Roy I know he tell you we're going to be seven and oh in the conference and more important he's going to really be excited about the effort and the unselfishness of his kids tonight you and I are going to be en route we're going out to Gainesville tonight we got to head to Florida we got more hoops tomorrow yes sir on a super Tuesday Kentucky and Florida tomorrow night That's after Illinois, Ohio State. I get to see my granddaughter tomorrow, too. Sydney. Sydney. Oh, six months old down in Gainesville, Florida. Bring her to the, bring her to the game. We'll, made her, we'll make her a rowdy reptile. <laughs> <laughs> One minute left in the ball game from Lawrence. What a brilliant performance, as well as any team I've seen this year yep. play. This performance here. I agree. It has just been brilliant from the opening in opening right to the end. They hustled on both ends. They blocked shots. They rebounded and they shot lights out, especially early. It would, away there. It would be a major, major big time show. Duke and Kansas hooking up. Inside drive. Nice shot by Najib Eccles. Eccles, the kid came out of Chicago. Big time reputation is a steal. Is a steal. Three pointers and air ball. And 20 seconds left. Well, it's Kansas been, victory. It's been fun to be out here at Rock Short Jayhawk Lab. Lee had it blocked. Picked up in midair by Carey. And he's got four. Gets the loose ball. Carey scores on the inside. Four big ones. Could be the last one. He said 573. He said, Danny, we beat your alma mater. We beat your alma mater. It's been all Kansas tonight. It's been all Rock Short Jayhawk. When Snyder and Roy Williams meet with a handshake, but number two Kansas looked all tonight at home all of that tonight at home and the star of the show another double double Drew Gooden the hero tonight one of many for the Jayhawks 105 73 was the final that's going to wrap it up from Lawrence Sports Center is coming up next final score Kansas 105 Missouri 73 this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for more log on to ESPN.com for now for Michelle DeFoy and Dick Vitale Brad Nessler from Allen Fieldhouse good night from Lawrence this is Sports Center.
Good guy to have on Dickie V's side. Number two, Kansas, looking to win their 11th straight. 24th ranked Missouri in town. Drew Gooden put Kansas up four in the first half. Less than 40 seconds left. Missouri trailing by two. Kareem Rush, fadeaway jumper. 43-42, Kansas the break. We're in a one-point game. And in the second half, Kirk Heinrich hits the three. Jeff Boshi from three. I said Jeff Boshi from three land got it. 60-45 Kansas. They were pulling away. Wesley Stokes, nice pass to Arthur Johnson. Oh. And that was kind of the story of the second half for Missouri as Kansas wins. Again, this is a one-point game at halftime. It's a blowout win for Kansas in the second half. They win 105 to 73. Drew Gooden, 26 and 10, his 16th double-double this season. It's the 11th straight conference win for Kansas. As for Missouri, they fall to one and seven in their last eight games while visiting. Whatever means it, Mizzou Center Arthur Johnson calls it larger than life. Talk about your Super Bowl hype. To Lawrence we go for this one. Drew Gooden picking one off and what? Bam. Jayhawks up 17, 13. Later in the first, Mizzou down two and clawing back. Tigers and Cats in this one. Ricky Paulding dropping a three on him. Tigers up one, but Jeff Boshi comes back and throws down the layup. Kansas up by three. Later, still first half, Gooden. Getting to the rim and cleaning up his own miss. Jayhawks up by five. Gooden leading the Big 12 in scoring and rebounding. Then Kareem Rush to Wesley Stokes. Watch out. Wesley's back behind that traffic back there. He knocked down the three. Missouri down one at the half. Second half, all Kansas. Boshi spotting up for three. Splash. Jayhawks up by 15. This is how it went for the Tigers. Arthur Johnson, it's larger than life, but oh, he wasn't. Rejected forcefully by the rim. Oh, that's embarrassing. Kansas wins 105-73, your final. Gooden finished with 26 on 11 of on the floor. Kirk Heinrich with 23. As you can see, five Jayhawks in double figures in this game. KU has now won five in a row. It's the first time this season that Missouri has allowed 100 points. It's also their worst loss of the season. Literally minutes from now, we will go out to Lawrence, Kansas for the post-game news conference. We'll hear from the Jayhawks, the story behind the highlights right here on ESPN News. Defensively, he was overactive at times in the first half. Defensively, he overhelped a couple, but uh, a couple of turnovers in the first half. I don't think he had any turnovers in the second half. And uh, one time he had one, they wanted to pull up and shoot a three. And uh, uh, he saw Keith in the corner and saw me standing on the yes, sideline probably too. But uh, he passed it to Keith. Keith drove and got a two-shot foul. And uh, he turned around to me and uh, said he really wanted to shoot that three. And uh, uh, I thought he showed great restraint at that time. But, uh, you know, 26 points, uh, 10 rebounds and 20. 28 minutes, that's, that's a pretty good night. Nick Collison, the next on the list, kind of a slow first half for Nick, but uh, really got a rolling in the second frame. Well, he did. He did a good, solid job for us defensively all night. I think that he was the one that, uh, uh, guarding Arthur Johnson's not easy, and uh, uh, he did a good job on Arthur, but he was also able to help us a great deal on all those drives that came along the baseline. And a couple of times they got to middle penetration and hurt us a little bit, but uh, Nick was sensational defensively and uh, uh, stepped up, made a jump shot there coming down the foul line that we work on every day. And as you say, he was much, much better in the second half. And Heinrich uh, hitting eight out of 11 shots, four out of five threes. He shot the ball so well at College Station, just kept her going tonight. Well, he did. You know, he got off to a bad start this year shooting the basketball and was sensational in every other aspect of the game. And I said I thought before the end of the season that he would start shooting the ball well, and he has. Uh, uh, he was sensational out there tonight, too. And uh, uh, Kareem Rush is almost impossible to guard, but uh, Kirk did a great job on him and uh, got some help for some other guys. And again, Kareem's uh, uh, almost impossible to guard, but Kirk's our best defender, and uh, he did a good job for us. Aaron Miles dishing out eight assists, not making a single turnover. Well, I'll differ with the stat sheet because I know he made one because he threw it away on an entry pass, but uh, uh, we'll let that one go. It's uh, uh, Aaron gets a little tired. I, I, we've talked to him a great deal. He's a freshman. He's not rest and not eating properly and uh, gets tired too quickly, so we've got to work on that the second half of the season. But uh, did a good job penetrating the ball to the basket. Uh, did a really good job defensively in the second half. Didn't get close enough to Gilbert in the first half, and a couple of times he did, and Clarence made big-time shots.
Gilbert made only one basket in the second half, uh, and who was on him most of the time? Well, you know, we kept switching around because, again, Aaron getting tired, but Aaron was on him, Boshi was on him, Kirk was on him. Uh, I don't know that Keith guarded him very much in the second half, but those other three all had some chances. And then there were a lot of screens out there, and Drew and Nick stepped up on the high side of the screen and gave help and then got back to their man. And we certainly have to mention Jeff Boshi, who hit three out of six trays, uh, had a big ball game, played 29 minutes. Uh, Jeff did, again, some good things. He uh, took a bad shot in the first half. Uh, uh, Nick took a bad shot. Drew made a silly play in about a three-possession game, and we had the timeout, and I said, if we want to be great, we can't make those kind of mistakes. And, and after that, about every decision Jeff made was really good. Coach, it was fun to see the actions of the kids, particularly Drew and, and Kirk and Aaron all uh, laughing and, and really having a good time out there. That made it an enjoyable evening for the fans. Well, I've always said I never want to temper a kid's enthusiasm. I never want them to uh, stand over an opponent, somebody on the other team, and uh, taunt them. If our guys ever do that, they come out and they know they're in trouble. But I don't mind kids showing their own enthusiasm as long as you're not putting somebody else down. And I uh, talked to them about losing themselves in the game, and uh, I think they really did. We had a set play for Drew close to the end, and he went absolutely the god awfulest way you've ever seen. And he turns around <laughs> to me and says, I lost myself in the game. And I said, that's an excuse for you to be and say, you should just say, I screwed up and go on from there but uh, the kids did try to focus on the court and our bench the crowd was uh, just absolutely phenomenal but uh, uh, they're like that a lot here that's the largest margin of victory ever for kansas over mizzou in lawrence and uh, i was just going to ask you about the crowd they were Really phenomenal, weren't they? Well, they were. You know, the students started uh, Saturday a week ago. We played Oklahoma here, and I came to work on Sunday, and uh, the students were already camping out at that time. Uh, I think before, somebody told me before they opened the doors tonight, they had a total of 113 student groups that were out there, and uh, I brought more donuts this morning than any game I've had this year, and uh, I'd like to bring even more on Saturday. All right, Coach. Well, again, congratulations, and Bob, that's the story from the head man. Back to you. Uh, well, my name's Dave. I was going to say, are you Bob? Yeah. My friends call me Bob. Kansas 10573. That is my dog's name, but really that's irrelevant. Let's go right back out to Lawrence, Kansas, as the press conference rages on. Other people will not get a chance to ask questions. <laughs> Uh, we needed to do a better job of that, and uh, they had had so many more offensive rebounds than we did in the first half as well. They ended up with more offensive rebounds for the game, but it's you know we didn't have many offensive rebounds because we made most of our shots. Uh, challenged them that uh, uh, to do a better job defensively, to play defense the way we could. Uh, uh, got on them a little bit because I thought the first 12 to 14 minutes of the game we did a great job with our break. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, we stopped pushing the ball and stopped running it and uh, started walking it up the court and uh, uh, challenged them to try to run for the entire second half. Uh, and I think we did a better job of, of all of it. Like I say, you know, I don't know how many turnovers we had at half. I think we had eight or nine at half and only ended up with 13. So did a great job of taking care of the ball and got it to guys in scored position and they scored. It seems like every week or week we, we ask if this is the best played game of the season. Here we go again. Well, how about tonight? The uh, second half was awfully good, you know, but uh, I challenged them in the locker room after the game. Uh, you should be able to play like that if you work your tail off every day in practice and use your brain. Uh, it's not just the physical part of it. It's got to be done mentally, but uh, we were awfully good in the second half. We were awfully good in the first half in Nebraska here, and uh, but I'm still challenging them to play for 40 minutes. We can get better every day. I don't care who you are. Tiger Woods, he doesn't beat all those guys because he rests on his laurels. He beats all those guys because he works harder. And uh, that's what we need to try to do ourselves is work harder every single day. So you beat three of the top four preseason teams now, and obviously you're the fourth. And it's too early to start thinking about taking the lead. You know, last year we were 6 and 0. I don't know if we won the seventh one or not. Did we lose the seventh one? Is that at Baylor? You know, last year we were 6 and 0 and we didn't win it, so we're only one game better than we were last year. And the year before we were. 5-0, and oh, I think, so we're only two games better than we were then, and we finished some god-awful spot then, fourth or fifth or something. But, uh, you know, we've got to, in this league, you got to play 16 games, and uh, uh, we've got some big-time games left against people that are very, very good basketball teams, and uh, I want the kids to enjoy the heck out of this when I'm going recruiting tomorrow and let them and have the day off. I asked them what time practice was after the game, and every single one of them knew we had the day off. It sort of bothered me a little bit. Uh, uh, I'll go recruiting. I'll be back on Wednesday, and I'll find some way to get ticked off. <laughs> Coach, 
watching Kirk battle through all the screens that they try to set for, for Kareem and, and working as hard as he did on the defensive end, were you at all surprised that he was able to score the way he did tonight? Kirk is about as conditioned an athlete as I've ever coached. Every day he works as hard as he can possibly work on each possession. Uh, you know, I, I really got after uh, Aaron and Bosch one time, not sprinting back on defense. Uh, uh, Drew and uh, Nick, uh, you know, but the times that I have to say something to Kirk about working harder, uh, I just never have to do that. Uh, I have to say something about making an easy play or something like that or don't make a silly foul, but I never have to say anything about him working hard. And during the offseason, he always devotes that time to becoming uh, the best physically conditioned athlete as he can be and then tries to work on his game, but a uh, sucker can play. Is there anybody in the league? That sucker play. Kansas handing Missouri its worst loss of the season. That's the sixth time this year KU has won by at least 30. Everyone talking about Drew Gooden and his skills leading the Big 12 in scoring and rebounding 26 tonight, and Michelle Tafoya caught up with him after the game. 105-73, the final here. Kansas handing Missouri its biggest loss here in Lawrence ever. They kept it close, Drew Gooden, in the first half, but you guys came out as you often do in the second half and poured it on 62 second half points. Why is this team playing so well right now? I think um, um, we have leaders on the team, and Coach Williams just knows how to motivate us at halftime to go back out there, you know, give it our all. And he told us at halftime that we don't want to lead the court knowing that the team out hustled us. And uh, I think that was our main focus at halftime was to come out the second half and be more alert defensively, and that would get our game going offensively. You had your 16th double-double. Now, I know you're thinking only about Kansas right now, but there were 20 NBA scouts in here. How satisfying was it to have that kind of game in front of 20 NBA scouts? I wasn't worried about the scouts because they've been, at, they've been at every game every year. And uh, I, want, I was more worried about winning the game. And, uh, you know, I knew, that, I knew I'd feel better winning the game rather than playing good in front of some scouts. But, uh, you know, that's something I'm going to look forward to, you know, to, as far as the decision to go to. Uh, to the NBA later on in my uh, career, but uh, right now I'm just having fun playing college basketball. We're barely out of January right now, so February's coming up. It, you guys are playing at some kind of pace. Can you maintain this as a team through March? I think we are. I think we can. Uh, yesterday we had a 39-minute practice, and Coach said, told us, you know, show, show everybody that my way is the best way. And uh, I think he kept our legs fresh. We had a, a three-game stretch, but I think, you know, this team is, you know, mentally tough enough to keep that composure throughout the, uh, you know, the postseason and make a nice run in the tournament. Drew Gooden, congratulations. Again, Kansas, 103 to 75. Rich Town, Rich Town. <laughs> I saw my boys in Richmond. Let's send it back to the studio. Drew breaking into the SIG out there. That's just <laughs> unheard of, unethical. The Jayhawks, well, is this their year finally for Roy Williams? The 32-point win over Mizzou, the third largest in school history over a ranked opponent. Only a 40-pointer over number 15, Colorado in 97, and a 37-point win in 1966 over number 8, Nebraska, were larger. Much, much more coming up on ESPN News in Oscar.